You boys ain't like nothing but scum. What we're here for is Atma's metadata, the meta analysis video. I'm gonna try and get this through this as quickly as possible. I don't wanna just sit and dick around forever, so I'll just get right into it. We're gonna kind of come at it from a stock standpoint. Uh, here's here's the numbers. So you've got mid range, which is down 1.5 percent. This is just what I've uh, played against. Uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of games. I think 300 games or something. 37.5 percent, 1.5 percent down from before mid range. Uh, Ramp was at 9%. It's way down to 3.5%. I hardly ever played it, although it's there's a reason for that, but it's still okay sometimes. Uh, control was a huge part of the meta last time. Uh, it's down a bit. Uh, there's less Planeswalkers and less blue-red spells, even though uh, I think those decks are still really good. And the whole reason why is because aggro's way up, and the reason why aggro's way up is because of vehicles. And honestly, energy too. Like the energy aggro deck is is just as good, but vehicles in general, just adding vehicles to old strategies. Uh, vehicles provide a hasty threat. Vehicles are difficult to interact with. You have to have instant speed spells, or you have to have artifact destruction spells, or you need a. It's just they're really really annoying to deal with. They don't get hit by sweepers. Um, and honestly, even things like Anguished Unmaking that target them, uh, like you lose three life against an aggro deck, which is also bad. So even the, the decks that have answers like Abzan still have drawbacks. And I think you usually need things like Blessed Alliance in those same decks, uh, often gaining four life in order to offset those downsides. It's very important that when you're going to make answers for aggro that you have, uh, if there's any drawbacks to those answers that you have, uh, ways to mitigate those drawbacks. Uh, aggro. So, aggro is on the rise. Its stock is way up. Way up. Now, you saw that control was still a slightly more prominent uh, part of the meta, but it's not really significant. It's about the same. Control and aggro are tussling with each other right now, and honestly, they're tussling for uh, dominance uh, in the overall meta. Now, when I'm talking about the meta all the time, I'm always just talking about the decks you face on average uh, when you're grinding coins or grinding rank or whatever. Uh, people always come to me with my top 10. Uh, my top 10 doesn't reflect the Steam Showdown or whatever. Well, in the Steam Showdown, a lot of times they, there's a lot of control decks or whatever. Uh, but on average, like aggro performs better in the overall meta because you will randomly fight people making brews even at rank 40 and I don't even start my data until I re reach rank 40 so it eliminates a lot of the chaff but some people who are good high rank players will still brew at those high ranks and aggro will take advantage of those a lot so you're higher you're, you're gonna get a higher win rate with aggro usually uh, and that's why it always tends to be higher on my list on the top 10 even if it doesn't seem to perform as good in uh, a contained uh, smaller meta like the Steam Showdown. But nevertheless, some of the aggro decks that we've seen in the past, White Humans was my number one deck in the past two uh, top 10 lists, and it's because it's just really, really good and really, really efficient, and the guys get bigger. Uh, usually aggro has a problem, uh, you know, it stays small, it needs reach or something. White Humans just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it plays the best Planeswalker, and it, you can run Avacyn, which is one of the, pretty much the best creature. I mean, White Humans was, it's still amazing. I actually did an experiment where for the first uh, 200 of the 300 games I played or whatever, well, not technically with just this deck, but well, let's just say the first 20 games with White Humans, uh, I did no changes. I didn't add Smuggler's Copter or whatever, and it actually was still almost the best deck. Um, but they, you know... But it has fallen. Uh, spoiler alert, it is no longer number one on my top ten. But it is way up there because it's it's almost equivalent to the Kaladesh aggro decks which have surpassed it. Mono red aggro is of course popular and one of the easier ones to make. Uh, but it's still probably the worst aggro deck uh, because it's predictable and it's old. And uh, you can just do so many more things now if you do a little bit more. Um, even if you, if you just made white-red humans, <laughs> even, 
which is pretty close to mono red aggro uh, and pretty close to humans. That's that's also reasonable. Uh, but the new hotness are these three decks, uh, black red aggro. Of course, I made a deck tech of it, although I think the people that have started adding more vampires have... Uh, I actually think adding some more vampires is better. Uh, me trying to just be close to the standard version just wasn't... It's still really good, but it's not actually that great. The guys are a little bit too small. There's not enough consistency. You need four ofs of more of the things. Uh, Green-red energy, I think, has been excellent. I've seen a bunch of different forms of it. People staying really low. They'll play like the 2-1... Uh, werewolf for one and uh, they'll just keep really really low on the curve and I've seen people go heavy into energy uh, I've seen mine has vehicles in it and is heavy into energy I've seen people try and have some top end that's crazy but generally the green red energy aggros are one of the better decks and of course white red or white red X which is black really or it's pretty much white red or Mardu vehicles is an excellent deck all the stock on these decks have risen with the exception of white humans which couldn't really get higher it went down but uh, even mono red aggro kind of went up because when you can't beat them you join them and when you join them you kind of just slip into those you know like where people aren't playing well I mean suffice it to say that just aggro is really strong right now because of smugglers copter and fleet wheel cruiser um, but the consequence of that is that ramp stock has fallen greatly. Uh, there's really, you know, the true the two traditional ramp decks is green red ramp and mono green ramp, and they've gotten worse. And it and ramp always gets worse when the percentage of aggro decks goes up, which is the exact opposite of what happened in my last meta analysis, where you saw control was way way up. It, control was even higher than aggro is right now, and as a result, ramp uh, was afforded the time to do what it wanted to do, but now it's not. And so you wonder why the ramp couldn't hang, you know, why aggro became so prevalent. Well, it's, it's because there's no new ramp spells and there's no new ramp targets. There's no new Ulamog. They didn't add Emrakul to the game. There's just no big targets that are really worth getting. And... And as a result, you just can't, you couldn't do better, but, but aggro got a whole bunch of tools to do better. You know, aggro was losing to control, but they got vehicles that was difficult for control to deal with, but ramp didn't get anything. It didn't get the two mana energy ramper. It didn't get a big haymaker or anything. So ramp just got overall worse. However, the Teamer Crush Emerge that I made a video about uh, is still fine. Uh, it has also dropped in favor, uh, and I've changed it a bit. I've added Radiant Flames, uh, whereas before I was just chumping and Kozilek's returning, but now uh, I, you need a little bit. It, just having those two extra sweepers helps it. But the reason why Teamer Crush Emerge is better than Green Red Ramp and Mono Green Ramp is because it reaches a point, unlike pretty much any deck, Teamer Crush Emerge is really the only deck in this format that reaches a point where it cannot lose. It just cannot lose. There's a point where you were just in a as close to a hard lock as possible, and you can't lose. And because of that, and because it has access to Radiant Flames and Kozilex Return and Flashing Back Kozilex Return, it's just good enough to like get back into an aggro game and you can play Pulse of Marasa, and it plays into the whole recursion theme in that deck. And so Teamer Crush Emerge is still like a competitive deck because the late game is a crushing, soul-crushing late game that people just have to scoop on because it's not beatable. Uh, and it's just holding steady. So that's where Ramp's at. Uh, down because aggro's up. Now... When you're in a meta where aggro is prevalent, uh, you know, the, the general thing is, is that aggro is asking the questions. Can you beat my small guys? Can you defend against my burn at the end of the game? Can you beat my vehicles? And the general, uh, the general thing is that control has the answers. Now, it doesn't always have the answers, but it's supposed to have the answers. Uh, and when it doesn't have the answers, then control just sucks. And aggro runs rampant. 
Um, but control does have some answers. Now, sweepers are good against aggro, uh, but they're worse because, you know, if you sweep the board and the aggro deck left one creature in their hand, which they always do, so they can re-pilot their smuggler's copter, then you're just going to take effectively haste damage the very next turn after a sweeper, and it's still pretty rough. Like, tapping out to sweep is completely necessary because they go wide enough and even uh, blue red thopters has made a little bit of a resurgence and that's a really annoying deck uh they're you know so you still have to have sweepers but they are worse um gaining life is actually pretty good uh blessed alliance uh obviously is miserable against the aforementioned thopters deck where they just have a bunch of little bullshit to sacrifice but if you can ever gain four life and make them sacrifice a creature in a turn without you know like if you're going to take seven anyway that doesn't feel really good but i mean blessed alliance is one of the best cards right now just because gaining life and making them sacrifice a smuggler's copter that's going over your ground defense or something is super valuable uh, and the last thing I want to talk about with, uh, as far as specific control things, is Dynavolt Tower and Fevered Visions are actually fighting two different foes. So, on one hand, Dynavolt Tower, even though you tap out on turn three and do nothing, uh, which is really, really miserable against aggro, uh, the upside of Dynavolt Tower is that uh, it aids you in killing all their little things, and uh, it can usually kill a smuggler's copter unless it's piloted by... Uh, veteran uh, motorist or there's a Depala on board usually you can kill a, thop or a, a copter and so that's pretty important. Fevered Visions on the other hand on turn three I'll still play it against aggro because you'll still just draw cards and try and kill all their things and take your chances but aggro will empty their hand faster and so they'll just get fed cards and you usually won't be able to do 20 points of damage with Fevered Visions, whereas on the other hand, Fevered Visions on turn 3 against Control is almost GG. It's almost impossible for them to win if they don't counterspell it. Like, if you play Fevered Visions on the play against Control, uh, you just almost can't lose. It's so, so, so difficult to lose. Um, but the deck, you know, the Grixis and the Blue-Red Spells deck... Uh, you know, they run both, so you kind of need to, when you're against the overall meta, you don't really know what you're playing against at first, and so you kind of just take your chances with, oh, I got Dynavolt Tower Fevered Visions in my hand, I'll keep it, because that's good, but when you go against aggro, you always want the Dynavolt Tower, and when you go against control, you always want the Fevered Visions side, so that's a little bit awkward, and one of the other reasons why control tends to be a little inconsistent, even though that deck is a good deck, even with both things, but, you know, without knowing what your opponent's playing, it's just a little bit awkward. Uh, and one, once again, why aggro is still the best. The top four control decks, in my opinion, uh, you know, where I was talking about the blue-red spells and Grixis uh, spells deck, uh, you know, I made a deck tech about the blue-red burn version of it, and I actually do think that when people started putting Alms of the Vein and uh, even I've seen uh, the unlicensed discrimination or disintegration i actually think that that deck is a little bit better even if it's a little slower on the mana having the third mana but i, I do think that it's better uh because alms of the vein like gaining the three life is actually pretty relevant and it's relevant in the mirror and uh it's i i just find you know that unlicensed disintegration being a really hard answer to some of the bigger green creatures uh does come up every once in a while so I generally find that to be the best control deck right now. Having all the little burn spells to take care of all the little aggro things, uh, plus Grixis being able to run Fevered Visions and hit and sweep for three, uh, makes it a pretty good deck right now. It's not always going to be the best, uh, but it's uh, it's certainly risen. Four and five color Planeswalkers is very, very frustrating to play against, and... Uh, but it is, you know, it, you know, when you're trying to do four and five colors, sometimes it just gets the doors blown off it by these aggro decks. Um, but you know, the thing about it is, is just those planeswalkers. If they ever survive, you just you just churn out the card advantage. And Abzan control and Esper control kind of do the same thing. I just I think Abzan's a little bit better because green provides a little bit better answers in the meta. They both have access to Blessed Alliance. They both have access to uh, Planar Outburst. Um, 
but I just think Abzan Control being able to play things like Sylvan Advocate makes it a little bit better. And counter spells are, are difficult to deal with when somebody's playing a one drop and a two drop and a three drop. And if they're on the play, all of a sudden they have three, four creatures on board and you have a counter spell in hand and they don't need to play anything else to beat you. So that's why Esper Control is a little weird. But uh, being able to play Soren in both of these decks still makes them quite strong. And uh, I just wanted to talk about, like, I don't know exactly where Bant Control stands, but that's what I've chosen to play in the Steam Showdown. And I, I did it mainly because it's pretty good against the Control decks. Like, you know, it, it has a lot of play against Control because it draws a lot of cards and it gains life against the Spells deck. Uh, it's not that good against the Vehicles, um, which makes it a weird choice because you would assume that people in the Steam Showdown will generally just play their best deck. But I've chosen to play Bant Control regardless of... Uh, my concern about the um, the vehicles uh, because it turns the corner pretty well. I think it turns the corner better than any of the other control decks do, uh, just because the amount of card advantage that it gets uh, it draws just so many cards. But nevertheless, I actually think that I'll have a bit of a difficult time with it. Uh, I don't know exactly where it stands, but against the control decks, it might be the best deck, but. Um, or maybe second to spells, but regardless, um, it's a thing. Uh, nobody plays it, so you don't know really really know what the list is. And uh, but you'll see it uh, if you check my Steam Showdown videos, or I'll do a deck tech for it. Mid range. So mid range is generally worse. I think the stock is down, and uh, what really tipped me off to it is that I had just a straight up losing record with Green Black Delirium. Uh, it's just, and, and I even, you know, and one of the main reasons that, like, Green Black Delirium doesn't work as well is because A, aggro gets off too fast, but B, um, the, when you look at the standard version of the Green Black Delirium aggro-ish deck, you know, that has four Grim Flares and, uh, you know, Sylvan Advocate and, you know, three Liliana and uh, two or three Mindrack Demon, like the mythic and rare limitations, or even in Grimflare's case, they didn't even put it in the game, uh, really uh, prohibited uh, decks like that from being able to reach its full potential. Uh, and not having four Verderous uh, Gear Hulks also. Uh, you know, it just it just didn't pack enough punch. You needed a wider variety of good things, uh, and I think that having white was a important factor in it, which is why green white aggro and bant on the more aggro side of this uh, this temperature wheel here that I've put on here isn't a a, cent a centrum silver logo. It's actually the speed about which these decks operate as far as mid range goes, and delirium was just by far the t the slowest. Uh, Reanimator sometimes is slow, but it also sometimes just plays Ulamog on turn five or uh, Omnath on turn five. Like that, that Grixis Reanimator deck people are playing is inconsistent, but it, it's decent enough. Um, this isn't exactly a rank of what's good, although I definitely think Green White Aggro and Bant are the best of this list. Uh, and Colossus, the Metalwork Colossus deck in particular, just doesn't have enough things yet. I tried it, it did okay, I would win, you know, I think I won like 35 or 40%. That's not good enough for me to stick with it, but uh, if they add more things in Aether Revolt, it might be there, because it seems close. Sometimes it really goes off, but I don't think it's actually good enough. Um, that's kind of where mid-range is at. It's generally not great, but you can play it and win. And the highest impact cards that uh, aren't that obvious I wanted to talk about because, you know, everybody knows what the good cards are and everybody generally knows the decks that they lose to. But these cards, um, these cards are just ones that impressed me. Uh, and they're not like Kalitas, obviously good against aggro. It's not Gideon, obviously amazing in every deck that can cast it. So we'll start with uh, number eight, because I could only really think of eight that were kind of unsung, and the eighth one is Cathartic Reunion. Cathartic Reunion actually just slots into a lot of good decks. Like, it's very important in that Grixis Reanimator deck, but it's also quite good in 
the spells deck and one of the reasons the spells deck is so good just despite being able to interact with those small aggro creatures so often is the fact that they can draw three cards with cathartic reunion to try and find an answer for what they need to find an answer to for only two mana like taking uh you know turn four off to cast a draw spell uh sometimes is like the death knell like if you have to take turn four off sometimes they just have too many guys but if all you have to do is on turn two discard some lands and try and find some burn spells cathartic reunion does work and it's really impressed me and it goes into multiple decks but it's a common so it's definitely not super obviously awesome uh, number seven is glimmer of genius now this is the exact thing i was talking about this four mana spell that draws two cards but scrying two and drawing two and getting two energy you know it's it's read the bones for four mana without having to take two life like this is very very good and it's been super impressive and being able to hold up counter spells and play this card and if you can make use of that energy it, it's exceptionally good and it's just been a super impressive draw spell for the control decks although i don't run it in uh my spells decks but I think it's been very good in pretty much any other control deck. Number six, now we're really getting into the least obvious ones. So Aether Touch Renegade is a 1-2 that creates four energy. Now it has two abilities. One is you can spend two energy and ping a creature, but you can spend eight energy and deal six damage to a player. Now, in addition to being able to redirect that six damage to a Planeswalker and usually kill it, this just generates four energy. I actually like this card in the energy aggro deck, even though it's a one two, because you can just play energy creatures, energy, energy, energy. You can keep your Lath New Hellion attacking uh, for two extra turns just by playing Aether Torch Renegade. And when you're against opposing aggro decks that a lot have a lot of X ones, you know, two ones and stuff, you can just wipe their whole board uh, with the with the ping effect. Aether Torch Renegade has really, like, impressed me and surprised me. So that's why I have it at number 6, because even though hardly anybody plays it in their energy deck, I actually do play it in my energy aggro deck, but not very many other people do. But it's been one of the most impressive cards. It's not in itself aggressive, but it's just got a lot of utility, and it and it helps the other cards do better. Like, you can play the, the Long Tusk Cub and then play this and pump it to a 4-4 on turn 3. That's kind of nuts because that card is insane like there's nothing that runs away with the game faster than a giant long tusk cub unanswered number five is talia heretical cathar now i know it's been around it's not a new card like the other three but this card is actually better than ever because if you play talia on turn three on the play against an opposing aggro deck they will never be able to attack you as fast as you can attack them ever it will not happen and if you need to be able to block that turn like you play talia you attack with your things you're in a race now their thing comes in tapped if it's a haste creature it comes in tapped they don't get to attack, and it's a three power first strike, so it's hard to attack into anyway that initial turn. It immediately puts the aggro mirror ahead, even if it's answered, because then they have to use a burn spell on a creature instead of burn to the face just to get in. Like, Talia is better than ever, and it's been surprisingly amazing. Number four is a Planeswalker, which shouldn't even qualify as not obvious, but it is not obvious because it's Arlen Cord, which has been super underwhelming but in every deck that can cast it first of all I just want to say that haste and flash are the two most important uh, things right now uh, keywords like haste haste lets you swing into planeswalkers because planeswalker decks are super prevalent being able to swing into planeswalkers with haste with Arlen Cord's plus two ability every single turn is really really crippling and being able to play Arlen Cord and make a 2-2 and burn uh, opposing aggro decks is actually pretty good gameplay. Even if you never get to burn because they attack her, you play you get a 2-2 wolf and you fog them effectively. Arlen Cord has been super impressive. It's good in the aggro mirror. It's very good against control. And I found Arlen Cord to be better than ever. And it's been really surprising. I, I've been 
so impressed by it that I've been just trying to put it into anything that, that I can because it, it just has a lot of gameplay. Number three is Blossoming Defense. This is probably not as... Uh, I mean, this is just a good card. I mean, I, I don't think anybody knows that... Or anybody thinks that this is like a shock or anything, but it's been so, so strong in that it can... You know, you can play your uh, creature on turn three to pilot your uh, smuggler's copter against spells without it being afraid because you have one green mana up and then they go to burn it and you make a 5-5 five, five copter and loot like it's just insane you can pump to kill people you can pump to save your guy blossoming defense has been just so extraordinarily impressive that it's that's why it's on this list for not being obvious because it's not obviously that busted but it is it really is insane Number two is Blessed Alliance, which is another one that's been around for a while. Being able to make a copter sacrifice itself when it's so difficult to interact with is sometimes really, really, really important. But being able to gain four life against the burn, the burn control decks and the aggro decks with burn, like... The, gaining four life has never been better and if you can just tack a couple abilities on there you're just in huge business so blessed alliance has just gone way way up for me it's one of the best cards right now and number one is probably the least obvious of all it's confiscation coup now confiscation coup i, I would not normally like sing the praises of a five mana sorcery even if it's mind control and even though this usually can't get something as gigantic as Ulamog, this is so insane. Confiscation Coup, being able to take artifacts. I've put Confiscation Coup in a few control decks, and when I've been able to take an opposing Dynavolt Tower, I've taken an opposing uh, Skyship, I've taken opposing Copters, uh, I've played Glimmer of Genius, gotten a couple extra energy and taken avicens i mean confiscation coup has way overperformed now sometimes you just get stuck against a deck that has a bunch of small creatures and nothing else and it feels really bad but you could do worse and hopefully your deck does more things before turn five so it's really just icing on the cake but i actually think it's worth putting in pretty much every blue control deck especially if you're running Glimmer of Genius, because you can get a little extra value out of it sometimes. Confiscation Coup has been... I've Confiscation Cooed things and had my opponents immediately concede. That's all you need to know. That's the mark of a good card. Last thing is, I'm just going to flash the top 10 decks. I don't want to do the big reveal here, because I don't really need to talk about them. I'm just going to talk in general. The top three decks on this list are all aggro. And number four is the most aggro mid-range deck, because it's basically white humans without just humans. It has Sylvan Advocate and things like that instead, and Gear Hulk to top off, and Avacyn, and the Angels that pump. I mean, if you looked at my uh, video on green-white mid-range, mid you know that it's quite fast and quite good. But the top three are super aggro, and even though white humans is down from one to three for the first time, it's not number one, I just want to note that a reigning two-time number one deck was put down to third because of Kaladesh. Kaladesh created such oppressive aggro decks that it made a two-time reigning aggro deck fall to third. That's how, I mean, and really Green Red Energy isn't even number two. It's really just vehicles and then like energy is just number one A. Like, they're both equally insane, and White Humans is almost there, but Kaladesh has really just made aggro into a huge thing, and vehicles are just it. They are the aggro tool that you needed to get by board wipe, board wipe, board wipe. Cool, I played a guy and I hasted and I kill, come at your planeswalker again. Like, it, it's insane. You have to have two different types of removal at two different times like you need a sweeper and a blessed alliance and seven mana or and six mana it's just it's very difficult to fight these aggro decks on all axis and the energy deck even has a, a weirder element in that long tusk cub sometimes gets way too big for languish so if you're trying to languish that doesn't even do the job uh aggro is just it, it's become super strong 
it's clearly the best but pretty much everything else is kind of middle like it's not bad um like the the crush emerge deck still has such a huge end game that you know like the the thing is is like it'll get the doors blown off of it by these aggro decks but you know how sometimes control or mid-range decks will turn the corner against an aggro deck and then somehow they'll like make one attack that's only slightly risky in case your opponent has the exact thing and they'll just have that exact thing and get you that doesn't happen to crush emerge crush emerge wins so over the top that when it turns the corner it it stays on that street like it will not lose at a certain point every deck can lose but that one cannot lose it's it's such a crushing hard hard lock I've never lost when I've turned the corner, ever. It's so oppressive. Grixis Spells is, like I said, the best control deck, and it's at number six. It's It's been so strong uh, just because it interacts with the vehicles and the aggro decks so favorably. Um, but even then, it's not like 100% to beat them. Like, if it was 100% to beat the aggro decks, the Grixis Spells deck would just plainly be the absolute best deck in the format because it's the best control deck against control. And because it's the best control deck against control, it's the best deck, it's the best control deck. It's also the best control deck against the vehicles deck, but it's not necessarily better than the vehicles deck because it will still lose to it probably 55 percent of the time i don't even think it's favored against it because that vehicles deck and the green red energy deck are just so good that even the best control deck doesn't really have the best play against it next is abzan mid-range and control bant mid-range and control these these decks still make a presence just because they have the highest density of just good cards in them uh and that's it. There's nothing to say about it. They just have a high density of like really, really good cards, and a lot of them work together. Um, number nine, uh, four and five color planeswalkers. It's just, it's just you see it a lot, and it's just huge card advantage. It's still very annoying, but it stays near the bottom of this list because it's not that great against aggro. It's it's almost like a ramp deck, and sometimes they actually run ramp spells to fix mana, and that, that's bad against aggro. But nevertheless, it still wins games, and I'll still lose to it. Uh, I actually played my Bant control deck that I'm playing in the Steam Showdown against a five-color Planeswalker deck, and they actually milled themselves out uh, without uh, without me milling them because I just answered as many things as they could. They had, like, 45 life, and I could not kill them, and they could not kill me. And it was just a huge stalemate, but they drew so many cards off their Planeswalkers, they decked themselves. And then uh, Black Red Aggro. Well, Black Red Aggro is still fine, um, but it is the worst of, like, these, you know, these... I mean, the, the new aggro decks are just so good that even something as good as Black Red, Vampire, Aggro, Artifact, Thing, like, as good as that deck is, it's still 10th on this list, but that doesn't mean it's the worst deck. I just want to make that clear. It just means it's the 10th best deck. There's all kinds of brews and bad versions of Abzan and bad versions of Bant and bad versions of Four Color Planeswalkers that are way worse. Like, you know, I, I could probably list 30 decks, and so being top 10 is still good. And the other thing I want to note is, once again, this... This list is based on results that I've experienced in the open meta. It's not it's not Steam Showdown where, you know, Mill will win and it'll be three of the top four decks or control and it's like, oh well Atma's got his opinion, but the Steam Showdown Steam Showdown is a small tournament, uh, and you're not gonna be facing brews, you're gonna be facing people's best deck. Or what they think is gonna be the best deck for that tournament. And so Aggro is just generally going to be better in the open meta and therefore always have the highest results for me and therefore always be number one, number two, and number three probably because you're going to face brews and you're going to punish them with aggro. You're going to face bad control decks and bad control players and punish them with aggro. You're going to go against opposing aggros and you're going to coin toss them. If you get to go first, you're probably going to win. So I just want to note that, you know, 
specific tournament results may vary, small sample sizes may vary, but in the but I really believe that in the open you're going to play against whatever random thing that these are basically the top 10 decks right now. And uh that's my analysis. Stay tuned. <laughs>